When a judge sentenced child killer Penny Boudreau to life in prison, no chance of parole for 20 years, most people felt that now for the first time it would be possible for everyone, family, friends, the community of Bridgewater, to move on. And for the most part, that process is underway for the many, many people who loved and cared for Penny Boudreau's 12-year-old victim, her daughter Carissa. Except for Vernon McCumber. McCumber is the former boyfriend of Penny Boudreau, a man who has told us he's unable to put the past behind him without first addressing some key issues in the present. Mr. McCumber agreed to be interviewed in our CTV studios. Here is that interview. Tell me a little bit about your feelings around this whole issue of what people think of you. And by that I mean there is the, a public perception that mm -hmm. you must have known or you must have played a part in Carissa's murder. I know, it was very, it was very hurtful. I mean, it just, I was devastated myself. It broke my heart, especially, to, you know, to have a, a terrible thing like this happen. You know, it just was hard on me. People thought I'd, I'd done something or, and I had to live with that, you know. Even with the work, I had to leave Bridgewater and, because people had their opinions about me. And I, I've had it affected me trying to get a job as well uh, down here. You know, every time I, I applied for a place or something, they they'd always they knew about what went on and they had their own decision about that, right? So I had a hard time getting work as well. And it's just been uh, I couldn't say anything. I couldn't uh, couldn't talk to anybody, you know, because um, you know I wasn't you know wasn't allowed to talk about it. And just to go through that alone was just a nightmare. Do you understand, though, maybe why people might have had that perception, or why the community maybe had those feelings? I can see, I can see how it would affect them too. But you know, I'd like to—I'm I'm the type of person I don't judge. You know, I'd be careful how I judge. You know, because you can be so wrong about somebody, and that happens a lot. So, so talk a little bit more about what happened to you. I mean. Uh, when this all happened, I mean, of course, I mean, anybody, I mean, I drank. I mean, that's the only way I could cope with it. I mean, I hit, you know, I started drinking a lot. I mean, and that's what I did to survive. You know, I'm going for, you know, I had to get some help with that. And it's just, you know, to have people think bad of you when you didn't do anything, going through the whole thing. It, Except you were living with the mother of this child. Yeah, and living with Penny, you know, she, if she tells you that it didn't do nothing, you got to try to believe somebody, right? I mean, you got to at least be there for them, to, you know. I mean, you just can't, you know, walk away from them, especially her going through this, and I believed her. Well, th you know? that's what I want to talk just a little bit more about. The, the day of, you know, Carissa's murder. Yeah. Just walk me through some of that. What, what sort of day was that? It was, uh, well, they were going to have a talk, right? I mean, they were going to have a powwow. I mean, you know, talk to uh, some questions about her attitude, right? So they were just going to talk and go out and have a sub or something like they normally did. They went out for a drive like mother and daughter, and, you know, I stayed home because I had worked the, other, the night before. I worked, a, you know, a night shift and worked into the 12 in the afternoon. So I stayed home and had a, had a beer and watched TV and went, went to bed, lay down through the afternoon when they left. And it was like another day. I asked them, would you like me to go with you? No, it was okay. And that's the way it was. It was just like a normal day. And until, uh, you know, she tried to call me to let me know that Chris had jumped out of the car. And I Is was that scared. what she said? Chris had jumped out of the yeah, car? Yeah, that's what, that's what she said. She went into Sobeys, and when she came out, she was gone. I mean, and, and that's all, you know, and I couldn't understand. You know, myself, it was heartbreaking. I just, it just seemed like another day to, to me. So then, so then Penny came home, then and, what? And then she came home and uh, told me, Chris, like frantically, said Chris jumped out of the car. And I said, well, you know, kids, I said, she's just probably walking home. That's what I thought, you know, she'd just walk home and, you know, cool off. And then when we, you know, around 7 o'clock, I made sure we, we caught, got to call the police and, and report this because, was, you know, 12 years old, you know, I was worried about her. It was, do you remember the news conference? Because I remember your face at the news conference. Mm -hmm. You almost looked as though you were um, you were in disbelief or shock. You had I thought you had a very strange look on your face. It, it was. It was just I just didn't know what to do. I was just it was just such a horrible nightmare that was it was like a bad dream unfolding, and I just didn't know what to do. You know, to be there for Penny and the rest of the family too. You know, but you felt that the eyes were on you. You know, and, and that's the way I felt, though, that they were looking at me like I've done something. 
But why did you tell her to make that choice? You said, you know, it's either Carissa or me. No, actually, I didn't. Actually, I said, because they were fighting quite a bit. And I asked them, you know, you have to do something about this is not a productive family when they're arguing and fighting. And I could come home and hear them screaming and hollering, right, as I was coming up the stairs. So I knew they you know, and I was new in her family, so I thought, well, when we all sit down, we're going to see a counselor or something. That's what I wanted to, you know, because to, to show a kid that, because she's going through a rough time where the divorce was, right? So, you know, that's, and that's why I mentioned that. Something had to be done with their fighting because it got, it got so it was destruct, not constructive of the right. family, right? Mm -hmm. It was just all the time in the mornings and, you know, and I'd come home and hear them arguing. And so that's basically what it was about. So when you were sitting beside her that day in the news conference, Marissa, I just want to tell you, that you really didn't know, you had no idea no, at that point. No, I had no idea. I had no idea. I just believed her. I really was in love with Penny. You know, I fell in love with her and, and Carissa too. I mean, she was a sweetheart. She always used to make me laugh. Who, Carissa did? Yeah, she did. She always made me laugh. She'd wait, hear my feet coming up the stairs when I'd come in and she'd open the door, 11 o'clock, she'd go, boo. And I said, they took two years <laughs> off my life, right? But she was, you know, just a kid, typical kid, you know, typical 12 year old. There's also stories about the two of you partying, no, doing uh, drugs, drinking, you the, know. Uh, the, well, now I had a beer after work. I mean, I love to sit down after work and have a beer or two, but as far as the partying and stuff like that, that's not true. That's far from the truth. If we were drinking, it was to drink your sorrels. I mean, cause, because you just couldn't deal with it. For you? For me. So you were drinking quite heavily during that time? Oh, absolutely. I hit the, yeah, I, I drank really hard. And it's just the scene that, you know, because I was just trying to stay numb. Because it was so hard to, this whole situation. You, you really can't, unless you've been there. And you go through it yourself and then you realize, you know, the tragedy of it. You know, now her mother. That's a tragedy there. It's a nightmare. Were you scared? Oh, terrified. Absolutely, nothing worse than having somebody think that you harmed a child or, or the police, you know, blaming you for that. You know, I know they had to get to the truth, but that's the terrifying feeling to be uh, locked up for something you didn't do. You knew you were.